In this video, we talk about the, the, the technical calculation for terminal value that is talked about in finance. Um, it is the theoretical basis for the whole discounted cash flow process that includes future or, or investment or value that's in, the, in perpetuity. Um, in the next video, I'll describe how one practically does this in the case of ventures. But just to, for completeness about the discounted cash flow method, we'll talk about how the financial piece of this works and what the theoretical model behind it is. This is calculating the terminal value, that is the value of the business in year, say, five, which is the last plan, the, the value after your business plan. Your business plan only goes so far. Well, what have you built? What is the piece of process or the, the product or the service or the operations that you've built? What is that worth at the end of the plan? That's really the question. And the way that's done is that, and you'll, these finance books tell you more about this, and I recommend that you take a look at them if you're interested. But essentially what you have to do is you have to adjust your free cash flow from your last month in the plan because the, the last month in the plan, your year four free cash flow, you say your year, your year four free cash flow in the plan might have some unusual investments in it. You may be um, not, not um, investing in your equipment so you can drive up that fourth year free cash flow. There may be some anomaly in those numbers. <clears throat> so you want to make a normalizer or an adjusted amount for that year four plan, year four cash flow. Um, that you that allows you to say that kind of cash flow allows for the continuation of the business going forward. There's no anomalies in there. There's no there's no one-time investments. There's no one-time uh, reduction in investments. You're not depleting your your inventories or anything like that. But it, everything is copacetic for a going forward business. So that's what that little hat on the free cash flow means. Making sure that that cash flow is is as if your plan continued for five or six or seven or eight or nine years and there's no additional value being taken out or being lost by something that's happening just in that year. All right, that's the terminal year. That gives you your terminal year, your fourth year. You have a plan for that one. You don't have a plan for anything else after that. So what you do is you say, okay, we believe this business can grow at a certain rate and that's this G value. And we believe it can grow at that certain rate for ever perpetuity now there's logic for this if you have a restaurant and it's in Long Island there's a certain population there the population is growing at a certain rate there's also inflation don't forget that inflation say 2% um, the population in that area or the amount of, uh, of wealth accumulation is another 1 or 2% that would be a justification for saying with inflation with population growth um, we're likely to have continued forever in our location a 4% growth year over year every year. So then in that case, you would take G to be 4%. If you're expanding internationally and opening up new cities and you can go internationally, and as far as the eye can see, you can continue to expand your market as well, then you can make the argument that that G might be 10% or 12% or 14% or whatever. So that becomes your G. So you need to come up with what your growth in perpetuity assumption is, and you need to justify it based upon the trends in the marketplace, what your plan has done to date, and how you expect that to continue out for a number of years. Now, there's less risk in this number because, remember, our rate of growth, our R, is so large, 50%. So uh, in, this, in the case that we were using as an illustration, so under that scenario, having a growth rate of 4% versus 3% changes it from, from a discounting of 47% or from a dividing by 47% versus, um, um, versus 46%. You know, so it doesn't change it that much because the growth rate is so large. But at the same time, you want to have a good logic behind why you see your G growing, your business growth continuing to grow. So you take your free cash flow, multiply it times 1 plus G, that gives you your, your nth year, your fifth year, your n plus 1 year, or your 4 plus 1 year, which is your n year. 
that would continue to grow ongoing into perpetuity. So how do you look at the perpetuity? We well, use bond calculations, like I was saying before, financial instruments, bonds that corporate corporations do. There's a lot of finance theory around this that shows that if you have a, per, a growth in perpetuity like this of a bond that grows in its value of its coupon over time at a reasonable rate or at a rate that you know and it grows forever, that its value today is that terminal value or that value divided by the rate of return minus the growth rate, R minus G. And again, if you want more interest, if you're interested in the math around this, it's uh, it's um, it's derived in in finance textbooks and the like. Okay, that becomes a terminal value calculation. Your economic profit, that is your normalized free cash flow, times your growth rate to get that first year five growth rate, or, or excuse me, uh, free cash flow, normalized free cash flow rate, and then you divide it uh, by the rate of return that you've decided your discount rate minus this growth rate into perpetuity and that gives you a value for the terminal value the financial value this is the technical discussion about how this is done um, in the next video I'm going to describe how we do this more practically for startup businesses where it's difficult and what you're really doing with this practical approach is approximating this financial calculation all right you need to be aware that this is there and it's the basis for this logic and also to understand it better, because if you ever do this for a living, you need to do this kind of calculation as well as the calculation I'm going to describe to you later as you really start to come up with valuations and what sort of, under, uh, what sort of value you, uh, you would assign to a company when you are actually putting millions of dollars at risk as a professional. So you need to understand this, but it's a, it, for the purposes of this course, it just gives you some background about what the logic is of the kind of practical steps that we'll talk about um, in the very next video. So we will see you then and talk about practicalities a little bit.